Good morning. I had been scheduled to host the show today for about a week, and the topics that we were going to discuss were what you would expect in any Louder with Crowder show. Talking about some news, make some jokes, maybe poorly, but unfortunately, that's no longer the case today. Well before any video that was released, we were going to do this show this way. I'll get to why Steven's not here uh, in just a minute, but it was planned from a week ago, not from yesterday. I just want to say off the top that none of this had to happen. None of it. Didn't have to be this way at all. We didn't choose this. It was chosen for us. In fact, as I'll tell you in just a few minutes, we went to great lengths to give people the ability to do the right thing, to honor their agreements, and to do what they said they were going to do. Unfortunately, they chose a different path. For the last year and a half, everything you've seen in the public eye has been part of a well-orchestrated plan. What is that plan? To assimilate damaging PR assets and wage a negative publicity campaign against Stephen. I'll show you the quotes. I'll show you the text messages. I'll show you everything. All of the stuff that we did not talk about because we were giving people the opportunity to do the right thing. Taking the hits. Taking the hit pieces. Dealing with all of it to give people the opportunity to do the right thing. They chose not to. I wonder why Jared decided to release his video yesterday. Just for some backstory, there had been no communication between our attorneys for a couple of weeks, so there was no impetus for it. The document compelling him to give a deposition had already expired on March 15th, so when he released his video yesterday, he asked you to contribute money for a lawsuit that did not exist, unless he's had a lawsuit that he would like to file, which he indicated maybe that was the case. We had not sued Jared. We simply asked Jared to knock it off. I'll get into the timeline of that. But Tuesday, March 26th was the day that he chose to release his video. I wonder if it had anything to do with Wednesday, March 27th being the fifth day of mediation between Stephen and Hillary. Why release it the day before mediation? Mediation is a great opportunity for people to come together and resolve their differences peacefully. This is the fifth day. If you want to do some research on how many days it normally goes on during divorces, you can. It's not five. Here's the timeline. On October 27th, 2023, we filed our original Rule 202 petition that Jared mentioned. Rule 202 petition is basically saying, hey, we're serious. Please knock it off and tell us how far this went. On October 30th, we sent a cease and desist. At that time, October 30th, 2023, all Jared had to do was respond in writing saying that he was going to knock off what he was doing. He was going to stop violating his agreement that he voluntarily entered into. He chose not to. Legal fees associated with writing us a letter would have been minimal if 
any at all. And I have the receipts as to why we sent this to him in the first place after around six years of no communication in this way. December 14th, we had one amendment to our Rule 202 petition, not quite the exhausting of the court as Jared made it seem, that we were trying to bully him with the law. March 15th, that 202 expired. March 26th, Jared releases his video. Jared, like I said, was raising money for a lawsuit that didn't even exist until this morning. It now exists because Jared has shown that he will continue to violate his NDA to be a part of this scheme to assimilate damaging PR assets to put pressure on Stephen in the divorce. I'll show you all the receipts, guys. It's there. He's actively flirted with violations in the past. And now he's involving himself in a private divorce for which he was recruited to leverage the company as part of this long-standing plan. And I'm going to say it over and over again to make sure you guys understand. We've been living with this for the last year and a half. The plan is to assimilate damaging PR assets and wage a negative publicity campaign against Stephen. Per Hillary's father, here come the receipts. I hate being in this position, guys. It gives me no pleasure to go down this road. I am being forced to go down this road by their actions to defend this company, to defend the over 30 employees that work for this company. I am not a guy that picks a fight. But if you tell me by your actions, by ignoring easy off ramps, easy opportunities to do the right thing that you are not going to stop coming after me and coming after this company and coming after the employees that work here and that put blood, sweat, and tears into this business. If you tell me my choice is to fight you or let them be taken out, I am absolutely going to step up and fight for them every time. We tried to do this the right way. It's frustrating for me. But you need to know the truth. And that's what's coming out today. All of this information is publicly available. Court documents, not opinion. Not saying I have receipts and not providing them. I'm providing them for you right now. By the way, this is the court filing for Jared. We'll be releasing that so everybody can have access to it. Of course, taking steps to redact personal information because we would never want to dox anyone. Here is Hillary's father in a group text thread to the family. And it's a message that was liked by Hillary. The type of team I want. They understand right-wing media. They are familiar with who Steven is and that world and the things that would destabilize him. Remember that word, destabilize. Fully understand and agree that Hillary's goals are ex and expectations for the outcome of this divorce are reasonable and attainable. Not necessarily according to Texas family law precedent, but by employing a media slash Brian Friedman and PR strategy that will significantly threaten this public persona and brand. That's that from 2022. Hillary's. Yes. This has been the plan from the beginning, guys. This is what we have been dealing with behind the scenes and not commenting on. We'll get to Brian Friedman here in just a second, but this is where Jared gets involved. After six years of no communication, Jared gets roped into Hillary's plan, gets involved in this plan. February 17th of 2023, and just leave that overlay up for me, Hillary and Jared met in Atlanta to discuss their strategy, and they took this picture, how he changed my mind. I guess a proposed book that Hillary would like to write to apply more pressure to Stephen. February 20th, per Jared's text messages, any scenario where Hillary and I team up is the end of him, meaning Stephen. It is his worst nightmare. Watch the real fear enter his eye when Tim asks the question. All been going on behind the scenes. Can you believe the actions of people that are out in public saying they're trying to do the right thing and yet behind the scenes scheming 
to pressure Steven with a negative PR campaign. It's going to be worse in just a minute, guys. Unfortunately, this isn't, this isn't a fun day. But it's a day that has to happen where people need to know what's really going on. February 21st, 2023, Jared says this to Hillary. I think there's a scenario where several of us would be willing to attest to all of that. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs me. Why do this? This was done specifically in order to get more than Hillary would get in court. Or that Stephen even offered her because his offers have been more generous than Hillary would ever get in court per Hillary from a text exchange between Hillary and her mother. But again, all public information, guys, this is a part of court filings, not us pulling anything, not us opining. The financial offer was serious and the business evaluator and both of my attorneys agreed the financial offer was good. And while that's better then I would get in court. I want more freedom to that than that. Referring to as well, custody of the children. Remember that the financial offer was serious and the business evaluator and both of my attorneys agreed the financial offer was good. Offer was rejected. Why? Let's go back to the plan. To assimilate damaging PR assets and wage a negative publicity campaign against Steven. And then, after doing that, they could make it all go away for Stephen. Per Hillary's father to Hillary and other family members in a group text, the longer the divorce proceedings go on, the worse the outcome for SC, Stephen Crowder. Developing damaging OKPR okay, assets should be pursued. That deliverable is up to us, not the legal team. I wonder why. And at the right time, Mark Scroggins, the first of three attorneys, will show SC the path to make it all go away. Do you understand what they're saying there, guys? We're going to wage a campaign against Stephen. Not to tell the truth about Stephen, but to misrepresent things that are going on so that we can put pressure on him. Doesn't matter if these things are true or not. People are going to run with it because, hey, Stephen Crowder tells some jokes sometimes that offend people. So they're going to run with it and they're going to put pieces out in the newspaper. And then when the pressure is so much, when we have wrecked his life enough, at the right time, and I quote, bring it back up, at the right time, Mark, referring to Hillary's first divorce attorney, will show SC the path to make it all go away. They both want money, maybe fame, they don't care if it's at the expense or well-being of the children or the family, or if they do, they're hiding that fact very well. And look, based on what we've discussed, they don't believe that Mug Club should even exist because it should all belong to them. Having an undercover unit? No, that money belongs to Hillary. Going out and getting these documents released so you guys could know what's going on about the Nashville manifesto, about the Chippewa Falls stuff that we've revealed and the other stories that we are working on right now? No, it belongs to them. Being able to bring in additional people to carry the load here? No, belongs to them. This is the through line with every single point. And this is something new. Not new to us, but new to you. And I want to tell you this from the perspective of somebody who hates to have to do this. I do not in any way want to be in the position that I am in right now, having to react to people's bad decisions. But I don't have any other choice because it has been made clear by their actions over the last year and a half plus that there is no other way to say, guys, stop what you're doing. You have to quit. You have to do the right thing. You have to honor your agreements. Hillary is not doing that. And so this company is suing Hillary for extortion against us. We filed a lawsuit against Hillary, her family, and media reps for tortious interference and their extortion conspiracy scheme, which I will lay out in detail. I take no pleasure in that. I wish everybody would go and just do the right thing and we could all get on with our lives. And you can tune into this show and see updates about news, comedy, 
everything that you love about this show. Additional content from great people that you love to hear from. But unfortunately, I can't do that today. I hope we can get back to doing that very soon. In fact, we will tomorrow. But I hope we never have to address this kind of stuff again. I hope people understand that we're serious. We will defend the people that are here in this company. Here's, let's talk about some things that you know and maybe some things that you don't know. So, one of the things you know, the ring footage, right? Everybody remembers that? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my uh, machine just froze. Going out at all or no? We're still going out. All right. It's just stuck okay. on your camera. Stuck right on now. me. That's, you know what? That's fine. Yeah. That's where we need to be right now. Yeah. Just going to talk you guys through this. Here's what you know ring footage that was sent out that tried to portray Stephen in a very negative light, having an argument with his wife. Stephen admitted he's not a perfect guy. There are definitely faults. Arguments happen. People always say stuff that they wish they could either take back or was taken out of context in arguments. But here's what you don't know. Hillary deleted all of the other footage from that house on the ring cameras and the lake residence when a court expressly barred her from doing so. How many hours? Over 2,000 hours. Also, 8,000 hours never even handed over along with 18 seconds from the doctored video itself. A note, Substack video had small portions that were not even included in the court-issued videos, which means that it came from some other source. You can do the math. This was all a part of the plan that we talked about. To assemble negative PR assets to wage a PR campaign against Stephen to get him to give more, 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 Never enough. More. That's right. All the other ring footage from multiple cameras in multiple residences has either been actively destroyed or never even handed over in the first place. Here's another thing you know. There are family claims about hardships. I will make all of this stuff available on our website. I'll make sure you guys have full access to all of this. It's not us. This is court documents. This is stuff that has been filed. Claim hardships. Here's what you don't know. Hillary's getting $25,000 per month from Stephen. Per month. $300,000 a year, no taxes held out of it. In Texas, all divorce-related attorney's fees are paid by the estate. Stephen's the only one actively contributing to the estate right now, so you can do the math there. This is the first time that we know a dime has been spent from Hillary on a lawsuit that isn't coming from the estate, also known as Stephen. I don't like that, but I don't have any other options. Here's something else you don't know. Hillary hired entertainment superstar lawyer Brian Friedman as part of her PR attack against Stephen. I don't know if you guys remember who Brian Friedman is, but he represented Trevor Bauer's false accuser, releasing images that were doctored. What he knew at the time, what he didn't know, still up for a little bit of debate, but it looks like looks like there was some reason to believe maybe this claim wasn't 100% on the up and up. Trevor's been exonerated. It's been proven that this person lied about all of this. Maybe, maybe she even lied to Friedman. Who knows? But Friedman was all too willing to rush out and ruin a man's career that I believe had just signed a $100 million contract to play baseball and... Subsequently lost that contract. Still trying to get back into the major leagues, even though he's a well-accomplished pitcher. Should be on a roster somewhere. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that he was proven right. It just matters that the lie was put out there and that the campaign was waged against him. And Friedman represented the same journalist who leaked the ring video. Here's something else you know. Media hit pieces. We all saw that, right, Tim? Hit pieces coming out against us last year. Lots of them. Se- seemed seemed Lots like they of them, yeah. seemed like they were planned and orchestrated. Yeah, they were one after the other. One of the one of the claims was that uh, Stephen had revealed his genitalia to people in the office. <laughs> we talked about that. We all we addressed all of that. I guess Here's they what didn't, they didn't see our Terminator Two uh, Terminator Two yeah, sketch, yeah. or when you have to wear you know like really thin 
garments so that you can be painted gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? For some of the sketches that we've done. Here's what you don't know. Jared exposed his penis in professional settings to Stephen. When they were at Wham! Radio, he would expose himself in a way that only Stephen could see. And then for an hour, Stephen would have to sit there talking to people at the radio station about the business dealings of the show and not break. And to them, it was funny then and funny now. We're not calling him out for it. We're just saying it seems a bit odd that he was somebody who participated, maybe even started doing it, and then apparently cried foul about it. Here are some other key facts that I want to bring up. And tell me, do you think these facts seem destabilizing to you? And just, first off, just think about that. We want to do things that will destabilize him. We want to put enough pressure on him that he will give us everything that we ask for and then Mark Scroggins can come in. Their text message guys can come in and show Stephen how to make it all go away. It's exactly what was in the text message. Let's start with Joe Lewis, Stephen's dog. Hillary tried to have Joe Lewis removed from him. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Falsely claimed that Joe was dangerous, citing the previous owner. The previous owner, let me, let me just say this. The, that happened while I was in Stephen's office. He got a note saying from Hillary that Joe Lewis was dangerous and needed to be removed from the presence of the children. He almost started crying. She was trying to remove everything from his life to put pressure on him to get more than she would get in court. Thankfully, Stephen was able to contact the previous owner who signed an affidavit stating that it was not only false but the exact opposite of what true what was true in that situation. She also tried to get me to abandon Stephen when she filed for divorce. You heard me correctly. Gerald needs to leave Stephen. I haven't talked to anybody else about that in any detail. As all of this is going on, I was, and this is not part of what I planned on talking about today, guys, but I need you to understand the level of, I don't even know the right word to say, but the, the crap that we are having to deal with is probably the most polite thing that I can come up with. Can you believe the things that you're hearing? Gerald in Stephen's moment where he needs his best or one of his best friends to be by his side. Gerald, leave him. There's a campaign to apply pressure. That part I'm assuming now that I know that that was part of the plan at the time, it was just Gerald, leave him. Unfortunately, Jared echoed those same comments on one of the most difficult days of Stephen's life after not really hearing from Jared for a while. I don't remember exactly how long it was. It could have been years. I don't know. I can look back. Leave him. Abandon your friend when he's in need. When everybody agreed that it would be great if Gerald could help with Stephen and help advocate for Stephen and be a, a, a sounding board for what's going on in life to be able to talk to him as I had been doing for many years prior to ever being paid anything to do anything with Stephen. I was his friend before. Guess what? I'll be his friend after if there is an after. He can stop paying me today and it won't change the facts that I have laid out here. And I know exactly what's going to happen. You guys are going to come after me. It's fine. I can handle it but you're not going to address what I've said that's factually true in court documents publicly available because you can't. It's so clear. Tried to take his dog away to destabilize him as part of the plan. Tried to take me away. I now know that was part of the plan to destabilize him. Then got it echoed by Jared that I should leave him in his darkest potentially hour when he's fighting for his name for his reputation and for his life here's another thing that you may not know 
The address where the children slept part of the time was intentionally doxxed. Hillary sent the private and unlisted residential address to Jared. You know how I know it was private and unlisted? Because I was in charge of making sure it was so. Do you know why? To make sure that the kids were safe. Not everybody likes Stephen. Some for very good reason. He's a, he, he comes off and he says a joke. Fine. You don't like that? Fine. If you want to use it, great reason. You don't like somebody because of a joke. But a lot of people don't like him because he pushes back on evil. And there are a lot of groups out there that don't like to be called out. And they don't like Stephen and maybe they would try to do him harm. And so to make sure that his family is protected, he goes through great lengths to make sure nobody knows where he lives. Hillary intentionally doxed it. I won't use the exact words. You can see it in the image. But it's evil. Shortly after Jared received Stephen's personal address from Hillary, Stephen received a threatening message. The package came from Smyrna, Georgia. Didn't say who it was from, but we later found out that that is mere miles from where Jared lives. Again, Jared's probably going to say, oh, come on, it was a joke. Okay. It's an unlisted address. Nobody knows where he lives. You didn't say who it was from. You just said, watch it, effing watch it on there. I know where that came from. The edited video. I get it. The additional context that I'm not even going into today about what happened in that, but I probably will at some point to give you a little bit more insight. Not even close to what you think it means. Hillary admitted it. Have it on tape. Part of public filings. Stephen receives a package at an address that no one is supposed to have. And then wonders, are my children safe? Am I safe? Who leaked this address? How did this get out? How would you feel if the person that you had children with leaked your private home address knowing that the kids would be there during certain times of the week? It's something that I can't even comprehend. Something so reckless. I want to say a couple of things as I wrap this up. NDAs are a normal part of doing business. You sign an NDA voluntarily. Jared signed his voluntarily and then he breached it. Didn't have to sign it. Could have left. Could have just left. Could have walked away. Didn't have to sign the exit. He signs it on the way in again. Didn't have to sign that either. Never. He voluntarily signed an agreement and then decided to break it. He also lied to you guys and said that I was asking for every single conversation he, with his friends and that I was telling him that he couldn't contact his friends. No, mm -mm. that's not true. Look at the Form 202 position that we put out there. I told Jared in that, in that petition, basically like, hey, you have to stop talking about the company, the agreement that you made with us. And that can be as simple, like I said earlier, as making sure no address is divulged to where somebody sleeps with their young children. It's common. I'm not restricting your speech, Jared. I simply asked you to honor your agreement that you voluntarily entered into. And you had every opportunity to do the right thing before being sued today. We'll get the lawsuit to you, I promise. And I hate it, man. From the very beginning, I talked to the lawyers about making sure that this cost you as little as possible. You don't know that because you never reached out to me. You just assumed the worst. Assume that I was bought and paid for by Stephen. I'm bought and paid for by no one. Again, Stephen's friend before this job, Stephen's friend after this job. I didn't want this to cost you money. I didn't want this to go out and be public for everybody. I did want you to honor your agreement and knock it off. When you refused... I needed to know how far this went. That was it. It would have been the end of it. After two hearings that maybe lasted about an hour each and very minimal work and a deposition deadline that had expired, you decided to come out and say that we had sued you, which we hadn't. That video makes it very clear that the only way that we can get to a place of understanding of what your agreement was and that you should honor it is for me to have to sue you. 
I did not want it to be this way. I take no pleasure in it. No matter what the outcome, I take no pleasure in it. I just want to protect this company and the people that work here. One thing you also need to know, guys, Hillary is behind this entire plan to assimilate the damaging PR assets and wage a negative publicity campaign against Steve. And I'll say it again. That is the plan. And maybe it's because she's taking bad advice. I don't know. All I know is that the actions have been consistent in rejecting very generous offers. More money than Steven's ever made in his entire life has been offered. No. More. 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 Every time. Every single time. I want to just reiterate all of these lawsuits. All of it. I hate it. I hate every single second of it. It does not give me pleasure. I've said it hopefully enough times for you to understand that I don't like doing this. But if it comes down to defending the company and the employees who pour so much of their lives into it or staying silent while people repeatedly attack us and violate their agreements with us, then you better believe that I am going to fight like hell to defend this company and to defend our ability to communicate with you and to defend Steven as imperfect as he is. We are all imperfect. It didn't have to be this way. There's still time to do the right thing. But I guarantee you what's going to happen again. They're going to attack me and not talk about the facts. They're going to continue to try and wage this campaign against Steven. Jared, you left in August of 2018. We said nothing about you. Move on with your life, man. What in the world are you doing? I don't want this line to keep going, but this lawsuit is the only way I feel like we can get any kind of understanding. I'm sorry that it had to happen this way, but it wasn't something that I chose. And look, I'm sorry for all of you who have to hear this drama. We're not pleased in any way to be a part of drama. Sometimes it happens and we have to defend ourselves and we don't shy away from that, even though it's drama. Nobody likes it when conservatives are fighting one another. Nobody likes it when people are attacking and it's just like a, a terrible episode of network TV. I hate it too. We want to get back to doing the content that you like and we will. I appreciate a lot of you standing up and saying, hey, I know these guys. There's got to be more to the story. I hope today you found out there is a lot more to this story. A whole lot more. There's been a campaign going on for the last year and a half plus where Hillary has been roping people in, people that she hadn't talked to in years and hadn't even really been friends with to try and damage Steven Crowder and get more than a court would allow. It's time for that to stop. Today has to be the day that that starts to change. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be doing the show.